turrets. They are your first and foremost defense in arc. And they've now been given a big upgrade to give your enemy tanks a much harder game. You're right, kids, it's Ras Clark. And the TLC 3 patch dropped last weekend that has completely transformed turrets as we know it, offering some new functionality and including something that is going to change tanking metas forever. Before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, drop a like, share around, and let's get into it. So whilst I'm at it, I'm going to give you a general overview of every turret. So this is the most comprehensive guide, including the latest updates for them. Kicking off with the Plant X, that does 32 damage and has a few options for you. Normally grown via crop plot and fertilizer. You've got a range of options from putting them to sleep so they don't shoot, renaming them to whatever you deem fit so you know what turret is shot what, demolishing of course, changing your targeting, whether it's survivors, tamed creatures, both or wild, and then the range, whether you want low, medium, or high. But you can see there a new option in the pinwheel called copy settings options. And within there, you've got two different options to choose from. One that copies the settings to all of the turrets in range. So whatever you've chosen for that plant X, whether it's high or survivors only, you can now replicate that setting to every single turret in range. You can also choose whether to affect only the turrets within your limit range or all turrets within your tribe. And when you copy the settings to all in range, a little pop-up message will tell you how many turrets you've just copied that setting to. So now the auto turret that shoots for 118 damage without a saddle and has a few more options on the pinwheel that the X plant doesn't. As well as having all of the options that you have on the X plant pinwheel, you have a few more options to boot. One is a warning function where you can choose to let your enemies know that there is a turret in range by giving them a two or four second warning. And as well as being able to pick the turret back up, you can also set a pin code, which has a range of uses now. So jumping back into the new copy settings option, as well as being able to copy the settings to any turret in range, you can also choose to copy the settings to any turret with the same pin code, as well as a very cool function to set a pin code to every turret in range. And to those that have never spent the time pin coding all of their turrets and wondering why they would do that, Here's one feature you may use depending on the scenario you're in. Here is a keypad, another thing you can make in Arc. And by having that new pin code setting that automatically changes every turret to the same pin code, you can deactivate them all at once with no fuss, job done. You can also then of course activate them all should the mood suit you fit. So onto the heavy turret which can deal upwards to a mean 531 damage. That holds all of the same functions that an auto turret does, apart from being able to hold a lot more bullets, being a much stronger turret, and hitting a lot harder, which is also the best for hitting fast moving projectiles like rockets for instance, as opposed to the slower but hard hitting tech turret, hitting up to 750 damage. That also holds some very cool new features that I don't think Wildcard even mentioned in the TLC update. So the first one is set creature targeting level range, which offers you the ability to set a minimum level of what times it'll shoot, and also a max level, ensuring you're not wasting those precious element shards on some poxy little time. And then the game changer, set targeting options. Why is this a game changer? Well, you can choose to exclude any dino class you wish, so your tech turrets don't shoot those dinos. But you can also toggle it to include a particular type of dino that you'd prefer the tech turret to shoot at. So here's an example, a dodo. Now it needs to be pretty close for you to do this, but once it's in range, you can then select that class of choice as your preferred dino to shoot 
or you'll prefer Dino not to shoot. So here's an example using a Pego and a Dodo, and I've ordered the Tech Tory to only shoot Pegos. Boom! <laughs> and now I can switch the order to just Dodos. So see you later, Dodo. Right, so let's do this in a real PvP scenario. You've got your tank, you've got your base eater and Arthro. Here's a wacky one by one design that I made some time ago with the turrets all set to ignoring the tank. As you can see here, I've pushed right up, nothing shooting me, making my tank useless for soaking up any bullets. But the minute I pull up on an Arthro, hoping the tank will divert the bullets, I've got no chance as the turrets are set to not shoot my tank and shoot me instead. Have a think about that guys. Do you see some potential? I think I do. I think this is going to really change the PvP meta and will only blow up even more with the introduction of the ammo box coming in Genesis 2. Let me know what you think guys. Thanks for watching. My name is Ross Clark. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And as always, peace out.